Hi everyone, Russell here again. Uh, so we just wrapped up day one of our Mexico to Canada trip along the Continental Divide. I'm gonna throw in some uh, GoPro footage. I'm going to throw in some drone footage. And uh, and we basically drove from uh, Deming, New Mexico down to the Antelope Wells Crossing, uh, back north uh, to Silver City, New Mexico. Um, we met some cool strangers at the border I'm throwing an interview in there. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Well, this is where the trip begins for us. We have the little 4x8 Harbor Freight trailer there. Um, as you can see, I just took the axle off, which was only two bolts. And I took the tongue off, which was only two bolts as well. And then basically have everything else loaded here on the trailer. So a little over 700 miles from here to the border. So we're at Antelope Wells, um, roughly 4,500 feet elevation, uh, 95 degrees. And uh, so now we're starting our trip along uh, the Continental Divide, ending up in Eureka, Montana. So I have my talented and beautiful daughter here, Laura. She's 14 years old. And uh, Zoe, the dog, running around somewhere. So we're going to um, basically start the trip today. And... Uh, We'll throw in some GoPro footage, like 30 second clips of some of the different terrain. Um, uh, we just met an um, uh, awesome family from South Dakota uh, and the Minnesota that uh, uh, their two boys uh, rode from Eureka to here on bicycles. So um, we chatted with them for about an hour. So good start to the trip already. So here we are at the border, the Antelope Wells um, uh, the U.S. border to Mexico. And um, I'm just starting my journey and I uh, ran into these two guys that are just wrapping up their journey on a bicycle, a lot more ambitious than I am. So uh, they've agreed to take a minute or two out of their time to tell us about their trip since they're ending and I'm just starting. So we can start with, you know, maybe a brief introduction. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm Tanner. Thank you. We both uh, just graduated from college, and uh, before we started working, we figured, oh, maybe we should go on an adventure or something like that. So, yeah, so we started up in Eureka, right up under the Canadian border, and came around down through Montana into Idaho, then to Wyoming, and then 
Colorado and down to New Mexico. Yeah, so roughly how many miles was that? I think we think Pretty around 2,200. 2,200. 2,200 miles. Yeah. So you're you're going to go about the route I am, just I'm doing the lazy way in a side by side. <laughs> yeah, in reverse. Yeah, yeah. We started pretty early. We started up uh, in Montana, and May 24th was our start date. And uh, so we ran into a lot of snowpack and stuff like that early on. Um, and so we had to make some adjustments because of that. Um, but other than that, like it was a pretty smooth journey. Yeah, so. great trip. So what did you learn from it? Or, uh, you know, if you had to do it again, what would you do differently? Well, I think there's like nitty gritty things, you know, like don't pack this, pack, pack that, or, you know, spend the extra money, get the nice gear, um, stuff like that. Um, but I think also there's like bigger lessons to be learned. Um, for me, especially, I think, you know, of course, this is like a physical exercise, um, being on the bike every day. I think we're averaging close to 70 plus miles every day. Um, but more than that, I think it became a mental, emotional, and spiritual exercise um, far beyond the physical one. And um, I'm taking away lessons that that are far more important than like just uh, route finding and, you know, getting on the bike every morning. So I'm hoping those don't, you know, stay in a vacuum, but kind of translate into the rest of life. So, so how much weight did you guys uh, lose along the way? I uh, don't have a current number because we didn't bring a scale down. To the <laughs> but, Makes sense. Uh, as of last week, I think I had lost 13 pounds. Not yeah, bad. I actually, as of last week, uh, had only lost one pound. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you probably gained some muscle then. Yeah. Yeah. I shed gotcha. the bad stuff and put on the good, so. <laughs> and so, where are you guys originally from? We're from Minnesota. Yeah. Went to high school together. Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, it's uh, great meeting you guys. Thanks for taking some time out to uh, tell us about your trip. Of and, course. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And thanks for the drone footage. It was great following you guys to the finish line. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And have, have a, a great trip. journey yourself. Thank you.
So for day one, we used just over 12 gallons of fuel. Uh, we had about 150 miles of highway. So um, I was just going whatever the speed limit was, which is typically between 55 and 65 miles an hour. Um, that was uh, about 150 miles of the trip. And then we had a lot of gravel roads cross, cross country, but I'll show some uh, footage in there where we, you know, maybe 35 miles an hour. Uh, so 230 miles, 12 gallons of fuel, pulling a trailer at higher speeds um, wasn't too bad. So one of the goals of this uh, video and this trip is maybe to give you some ideas, um, let you learn from my mistakes. So if I forgot something or, or any of those things, I can throw that out there and let you know. Um, one thing that I tried to do from the beginning is just not stress out, just relax. You know, if you forget something, oh well. You know, you're going to be able to stop and buy something if you have to. Um, I've just traveled, you know, um, to 40 different countries and you typically just find parents that are stressed out and angry and snapping at everybody. So just trying to remain calm and relaxed and make the trip as enjoyable as possible. So the temperatures today were between 75 and 95. Um, elected to stay in a hotel the first night. Um, just because it's very high wind. Uh, um, I'll throw in a picture of the restaurant that we ate at in Silver City, New Mexico. Pretty decent food, uh, local place. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to try to go to the Gila Cliff Dwellings tomorrow, but uh, one of the roads is closed because of fires. Um, of course, it's going to be out of the way, uh, but we'll see if we can still get there. So some things I took into consideration for preparing for this trip is um, you have to prepare for temperatures between 20 degrees and 115 degrees. Um, when you get into you know, 10, 12,000 feet elevation, it can get very cold at night, it's down to 20 degrees easily um, during the summer. So make sure you have everything for that. You know, at the beginning of the trip, 95 degrees, um, I have one cooler with um, seven or eight gallons of water in it and uh, just filled it full of ice and then um, just kind of had my 40 ounce hydro flask so you could just pour that cold water in there and then just have cool water the entire day um, have a separate five gallons for my dog every 30 45 minutes um, stop and let the dog out give it some water and uh, and then I had another cooler full of food so um, you know, if you get stuck in the middle of nowhere or in between cities and need some food, you know, have, you know, six or eight meals ready there. And then, you know, tent, sleeping bags that are going to be good for at least 20 below zero. Um, of course, you're going to have to tie down your tent every night because you never know when the wind is going to, to pick up. So you don't want your tent destroyed or for it to blow, blow away. Um, and then fuel. Um, so my the Honda Talon carries, carries seven gallons in the fuel tank so I just make sure that's full and then I have an extra 13 and a half gallons so basically under normal driving conditions with the amount of fuel I'm carrying I should be able to go 300 miles um, and that's more than enough and of course um, um, I always carry more than I need because Sometimes you'll run across somebody else that's out of fuel that might need it. So um, that's something that that I took into consideration as well. I'm extremely happy that I installed that PCI intercom system. Um, if you're going to spend hours a day, um, it's it's very very nice. You know, having some of that noise canceling, so you know the noise from the engine is not irritating you. Um, you're able to have crystal clear communication uh, with your passenger. And then uh, I had three or four phone calls. I didn't have to slow down or stop, just had normal phone calls going down the road, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour. Um, and then uh, played music um, the majority of the time as well. And being able to have your your music and your voice communications at different, different levels um, was definitely worth the extra money.